Hey everybody, welcome to video 2-4. We're going to be talking about symmetry in this section. And this section is going to go a whole lot faster than previous sections have because it's pretty much very visual and very straightforward. And um, you either kind of see it or you don't. And I can help you see it a little better um, the next time we meet if you're having trouble. Um, but it's also another one of those things that's pretty cool to use patty paper for. Um, two types of symmetry we're really going to look at here, and that is line symmetry and rotational symmetry. So on this first page we have line symmetry and a figure has a symmetry as it says if a rigid motion exists that maps the figure onto itself. So in line symmetry it's a reflection over a line that basically flips it onto itself um, and each one of those lines that it flips over is called a line of symmetry. Um, paper folding is a really good way to do this as you can see on this page um, but if you're a visual person, um, I know I am, I can usually just kind of see the symmetry of the figure and um, all we would have to do is just draw the line of symmetry through the figure. So on this page we can see that we have um, a triangle and later on you'll know that this is called an isosceles triangle. Um, they walk you through the patty paper process, so you're going to trace it onto patty paper, and then you're going to try to basically fold the patty paper so that you um, are seeing only half of the figure. And if you can do that, and it folds onto itself without leaving any kind of overlap, then it has line symmetry. So for part C, it says sketch any lines of symmetry on this figure. This is just going to be one straight line that goes right through the middle, okay? So this one only has one line of symmetry. If we go to the next page, we can see that obviously there are going to be figures that are not just always the isosceles triangle that you've come across here. And so for the first figure, we have a rectangle. We want to know how many lines of symmetry does this have? Well, yeah, we can go right down the middle and we could fold it so that it was left to right on top of itself, but we could also fold it top to bottom so that those right angles came down and were on the two bottom right angles. And so this one actually has two lines of symmetry. Here in part, um, the second part of part D here, second diagram, we have a triangle and I don't know about you but you can tr trace this on patty paper all you want. Um, if we tried to draw a line through here, there are no lines that it's going to fold right on to itself. Um, maybe the only one I could see would be a line coming across and so it does not have to be a horizontal or a vertical line um, but this almost looks like it's the isosceles triangle from the first page kind of laying on its side. That's the only one that I could see that would work there. Um, and then also another um, figure in the third part here of part D don't um, just get stuck on the fact that it doesn't fold uh, vertically or horizontally. Remember it could be any line that you can draw through it. So we've got another one that would fold um, kind of on the diagonal there. Okay, So that's line symmetry. Really there aren't, um, um, there aren't many other strategies that I can tell you it, it has line symmetry. Lots of things in the world around us have line symmetry. Um, hopefully structural buildings have symmetry in that both sides are um, constructed at a 90 degree angle. Um, our human body has a lot of line symmetry to it, so you can kind of see and feel out what that is. If we move on to the second type of symmetry here in Explore 2, this is what we call rotational symmetry. So it says a figure has rotational symmetry if instead of reflecting it onto itself, it rotates onto itself somehow. Um, this is typically seen um, in, you can see like a star example, um, or a figure that has points to it in some way, or corners to it, um, and usually it's identical at each one of those corners or each one of those points. So this figure that you see over here on the right does have rotational symmetry, and if we ask what is the angle of rotational symmetry, that is what's the smallest angle of rotation that you could turn it and have it land on itself. And you basically want to think of it kind of turning through a center point, um, almost like a spinner on a game board. Um, you want to know how far does it need to turn so that it'll land right on top of itself. 
So in this particular diagram, we have a five-pointed star. And because it has five identical points, um, we're just going to take 360 degrees for the total degrees in a circle and divide it by five, and we get 72. So 72 is the smallest angle of rotation that we would need to turn this figure so it would land on to itself. Now, of course, there are multiples of 72 all the way up to 360 that would work um, for also rotating it that many degrees, but when we talk about angle of rotational symmetry, we're really just talking about the smallest one. So we're going to focus on 72 degrees here, okay? Um, for the next part of the lesson, uh, we're just going to go through and look at, again, some different figures and talk about what is the angle of rotational symmetry or, indeed, does it even have rotational symmetry. Um, we say that a figure does not have rotational symmetry if the only rotation that it can do is 360 degrees or a full turn to get it back onto itself. That would be a case where there is no rotational symmetry. Okay, um, Okay. so part A, we've got a, a figure here. It looks like um, what we call an equilateral triangle where all three sides and angles are the same. Um, and they're doing it on tracing paper, but I think you can see there's three points, so we're going to take 360 and we're just going to divide it by three and that's 120 degrees that we would rotate it through and then when it says what are all the angles, when you see that that's when you start going by multiples of the number you just came up with until you get to 360. So 120 and 240 and then the next one would be 360 but we usually don't state the 360 because, of course, every single figure could be rotated 360 degrees or a full circle and it would land back onto its original position. So we would just say, what are all the angles? It would just be these two right here, you guys, 120 and 240. Okay, let's go to the next page. Page 103 is where I am right now, 103. And part B is saying, determine whether each one of these figures has rotational symmetry or not. Um, and if it does, then identify all the angles of rotation that are less than 360 degrees. Like I said, we don't use 360 itself. So for this figure, um, which is the square to begin with, we would say that, yeah, there's four corners. So the angles of rotation would be the smallest angle of rotation is 90 degrees, but then we could also go 180 and 270 as well, okay? For the second figure, there is really no way to get that triangle back onto itself unless we turned it all the way around onto itself. So we here would say that this had no rotational symmetry. And then the last one, this arrow, um, we would have to turn it 180 degrees to get it to rotate one point to the other there. So that's the only angle of rotation. Okay. Moving on to explain one, um, we're going to just take a look at a different shaped figure here and describe all the types of symmetry that it might have. So does it have line symmetry we're going to look at first, and then does it have rotation symmetry or possibly does it have both? So here we've got a four-pointed star, and I think you can see that we could divide this going like so and like so. Horizontal and vertical are usually where our brains go for symmetry first, and you can see those lines drawn in in step one. On the next page, though, remember, other lines of symmetry other than horizontal and vertical need to be considered, and these diagonal lines get added to the mix here. So this actually has a total of four lines of symmetry. Then next, we're going to look for rotational symmetry next, okay? And the rotational symmetry is um, how many different places could I rotate it to until it matched its original position or what's the smallest angle? And of course, we're going to take 360 and divide it by 4 or 1 fourth of 360, which is every 90 degrees would be an angle of rotation that would work there. So there are, in summary, four lines of rotation, or excuse me, four lines of symmetry, and then 
um, the angles of rotation would be 90, 180, and 270. Okay, there's another fill-in example here on the page with part B, um, but I think you should have the gist of it by now, so you can skip right over to page 105, and please make sure that you attempt to fill in the information here for these four different looking figures, 6, 7, 8, and 9 are going to be your turns that I'd like for you to look into before we get back together. Alright, we'll see you next time.